today class so today we're going to start our lecture on steel trusses and rigid plates okay so this is just going to be a short lecture so i hope that you'll take time to, to listen so that you'll understand its uh, definitions okay so a truss is a structural framework composed of a series of straight members so arranged and fastened together that the external loads applied to it will cause only direct stress to the members. The upper and lower members of the truss are top cord and bottom cord. So the members of the truss which are framed between and join the top and bottom members are called the web members. Okay, so a truss class is a structural framework. Okay, so well, the most common shapes are like this. So it's a triangular. Uh, then you have, as you can see, there's you look at it in, uh, in Google right now, so it has uh, members also. So if there's a force or weight uh, uh, being transmitted from the top cord, it will transmit that uh, that that load into the different members. Okay, so you'll have a better idea of that when you reach your theory of structures. Okay, so when you reach your uh, theory of structures, you'll realize that not all Web members have a purpose. Some uh, receive zero load, but they're being kept there too, just because it looks good or nice. Okay, so when the external loads act downward and the stress is supported at the ends, the top cord is always in compression and the lower cord always in tension, similar to the upper and lower flanges of a beam. The web members are subjected to stresses of either tension or compression. So when you say tension, so it's the force which uh, goes like this in opposite direction. So when you say compression, the force, okay, let me find the camera, okay, it moves like this, going like that, compression. So like being compressed, tension uh, going away, okay? So web members subjected to tensile stresses are called the tension web members. Those which are subjected to compression are called compression web members. Okay, so those are the important points. So let's move to the next slide. So when a truss is supported at, it, at its ends by columns, the truss together with its columns uh, considered as a unit is called a bend. So the intersection between two or more members of the truss is called a joint or panel joint. The distance between two adjacent joints along either the top or bottom cords is known as the panel or panel length. A quadrangular space crossed by an inclined web member is also referred to as a panel. The axis of all members of at which joint should always meet in a common point. The span of a roof is the distance between the centers of the supports and its size is the distance between the apex of the truss and the line joining the points of support. So it means that if this is your uh, two supports or your two columns, so the distance between that, where the ends of the trusses lie, that's what you call the span or the distance. So the pitch of a roof truss is the ratio of the rise to the span a truss symmetrical about its center line. The slope of an inclined member is the tangent of the angle of inclination with the horizontal, usually specified in inches <clears throat> rise per 12 inches run. So the portion of the roof between two adjacent trusses <coughs> is called a bay. So if you have two trusses which are in parallel and adjacent to each other, the distance between that is what you call a bay. Okay, so remember those terms class. Okay, so this is an example of a roof framing plan. So if you're under me in uh, building tech 2, I think you have already seen it, but this is a more de de detail for it. Okay. So you have here, I uh, can see it clearly, but uh, this looks like the trusses and this looks uh, This looks like the trusses here. Okay. 
So as you can see, this is the column A. And then you can see at the sides, this is your call out, this should be at least layer one. So when you, when you look at this column, this is column A1. Okay. So that if these are your, your parallel trusses here, then the distance between C and D is a B. So this is one B here. Okay, so let's move on to the types of trusses. So relative to the number and arrangement of the members composing the truss, you have uh, the first one, which is a complete frame. So a complete structural frame or truss is one in which is made up of the minimum number of members required to provide a complete system of triangles fixing the relative positions of a given number of panel joints. If the number of panel joints in the given structure and n is equal to the number of necessary members, then n is equal to n 2 times p minus 3. Then the incomplete frame, one in which the number of members is less than that required by the equation given above, then you have a redundant frame. A redundant frame is one which contains more members than that required by the equation given above. And relative to form class, so these are the common trusses. This is what you usually see in your houses. So you have a triangular truss. Okay. So when you reach your theory of structures, you'll be able to recognize which members uh, are subjected to uh, compression forces and which members are subjected to tensile uh, forces. Okay. But there are also web members which does not carry uh, any loading. Okay. But they are just there uh, to make the truss look more balanced. Okay. So this is a triangular truss. This is a quadrangular truss. Okay. So I think this is a form usually you will see in bridges. So I'm excited for you guys when you reach your theory of structures and then when you tackle moving loads. It's really interesting to compute uh, the effect on bridges, especially when uh, the load uh, is moving. So you have your reaction one here, reaction two, then you have a load moving in this direction. So it's really an interesting subject. Then you have here a crescent. Okay. As you can see, it looks the same, but it's not a straight triangle. Then you have a C source. First, look like a uh, scissor in form. Then you have the arch. Okay, so then the relative to the method of support. So you have a simple truss. So a truss supported at each endpoint. So a simple truss class is that each endpoint is supported by a column. Then you have an overhanging end span, a truss supported at one end joint. And the other not an end joint. So um, your clue in that is that one side is not supported. So it like looks like it's hanging. Then you have a cantilever span at truss where the entire support is at only one end. Okay. So this is your panel length. This is the peak. This is the truss plate. This is the top cord. This is the bottom cord. And this is what you call the slices. Because slices happen when you connect uh, two members. You have here the web, and a continuous lateral brace. Okay, and then this is the span. And of course, this is your overhang. This is the length of the bottom cord here. Then you have the relative to the arrangement of the web racing system. So you have the fink. This is the fink truss. So try to remember because some of these uh, questions, uh, they just, they might come up in your board exam. This is their whole truss. It's the most common. Okay, so this is the what you're really going to master in your method of joints, the how truss. It's the easiest one to compute your structural. And you have the prot. 
Then you have the sea source, which we had discussed earlier. Then you have the saw tooth here. Then you have the Warren Cross. So it looks like the Carmen Bridge. You have the Petit. Okay, you have the Pratt. Okay, and you have the Warren. So the, only, the difference is how the web members are arranged. Then you have a deck warrant. You have the Parker or Camel back. So it looks like the back of a Camel. Then you have the Baltimore. You have the Pennsylvania or Petit. And you have the K-Trust. Okay, so familiarize yourselves last with uh, the basic layout of trusses. Anyway, when you reach your theory of structures, you're going to compute uh, the sizes for the top cord, bottom cord, and web members. And you appreciate the form. Okay, so just have a short lecture for about process this week. So if you have any questions or clarifications, you can send me an email or a PM on my Facebook. Okay, so stay safe, Das, and see you next meeting.